You're watching Breakthrough News. I'm Charlotte Tenhenstein, and you're watching Breakthrough News on BTR Today. On today's show, we're talking about wrestling legend turned yoga teacher Diamond Dallas Page and his new fitness program, DDP Yoga, uh, achieving physical fitness and overcoming personal challenges through this twist on yoga. Also joining us is DJ Drew, host of the Reggae Hour and Sunday show on BTR, as well as our resident wrestling expert and fan. DDP, so you are a legendary pro wrestler, Diamond Dallas Page. Um, you are three-time world championship wrestling heavyweight champion, among other titles. And then three years ago, coming up to three years ago, you launched DDP Yoga, which has helped a lot of people not only get into shape, but even turn their life around. So the first thing that is very fascinating, immediately fascinating about this, is bringing together yoga and wrestling, which just seen worlds apart. I mean, 20 years ago, it, you know, could you have imagined yourself doing this? Um, not 20, but 13 years ago. You have to understand, I didn't start wrestling until I was 35. My career didn't take off until I was 40. That was in 96. Nin you know, 97 and 98, I was at the top of the wrestling world, and then I blew my back out so badly that three different specialists said my wrestling career was over. Now, uh... I was pretty depressed. I just signed a multi-million dollar three-year deal. And I'm a guy who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga the first 42 years of my life. So <laughs> for me to make that change, uh, it came with a lot of persuading. And plus, again, I just signed a multi-million dollar deal that was going to go away. So I literally would try anything. And once I started doing yoga, within the first three weeks, I felt a significant difference. So one time, one time I was getting ready to go to bed, and I started taking those yoga positions. And I started mixing them with the rehab. I rehab both shoulder surgeries, both knee surgeries. So I know quite a lot about rib, um, about um, your rehabilitation and breaking up scar tissue. Hey guys, I'm on doing a uh, Google talk. Please quiet. Actually, that sounds good. Uh, <laughs> I'm make it really live. Uh, but uh, when when I started to mix the the yoga with the uh, rehabilitation techniques, that really started to have a nice flow for me. And I threw in old school calisthenics, push-up squats, crunches, done with a slow motion burn. But what really made DDP yoga its own animal was what I call dynamic resistance. And it's when you're engaging muscles and like almost lifting weights while you're not really lifting anything, but you can create that. I realized that every time you flex or engage a muscle, your heart has to beat faster to get the blood to the muscle, so you end up in the fat burning zone, literally standing still. So wow. they're creating a program that is kick-ass cardio, dramatically increasing your flexibility, and strengthening your core like never before, all with minimal joint impact. In less than three months, I was back in the ring. At 42, wow. those specialists said I was done. At 43, I was heavyweight champ of the world. So wow. I've been taking that practice with me right on up to writing my first book, Yoga for Regular Guys, which was regular guys and hot-looking women. I mean, that's <laughs> what it was, and to grab that regular guy like Andrew uh, and pull him in. Uh, and then a lot of women started loving this program so much. I backed off the yogis are very namaste, DDP yoga, way more TNA, and tone and attitude. And it became a very, like, like a... Uh, um, like almost a boot camp workout with no impact. So it had all that energy that yoga doesn't have. And I started to share it my first videos, which were the YRG workouts and the YRG fitness system. And everything is rolled into <laughs> become DDP yoga. So now it's really, we've sold over 100,000 units. Wow, so congratulations. Pretty, wow. It shows it works, you know. That's amazing. Drew, so you've been a lifelong fan of wrestling. Yes. Are you, first, I mean, does first, this, does this kind start. of thing really surprise you? Um, <clears throat> well, I was... It just seem, seems so different. And, I mean, also maybe if you could just uh, give a brief uh, account of why you love wrestling so much and then how, do, how does DDP Yoga kind of jive with that? Well, like most wrestling fans, I became a fan when I was young. We all fall in love with it when we're young. And uh, I actually remember when you got hurt. I remember that. Do you remember that moment? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? But <laughs> you know, you can say what you want about professional wrestling, but you got to remember you can't, oh, yeah. you can't fake gravity. That's so every true. Time I, every time I hit that mat, it hurt like hell. 
<laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, I know you were working with Scott Hall and Jake Roberts. How are they doing with the program? Actually, awesome. Uh, Jake just left here, and as soon as I finish this interview, Scott and I are going to get a workout. We work out privately a lot because he's still with that hip surgery, you know, that um, rehab of that uh, hips. He tries to fit in with a lot of the classes that I do, but when we can work one on one, it's actually okay. still better for him. So we're going to do that, and then I'll go get some sushi. So uh, <laughs> let's, they're, let's they're both doing that. very well. Let's come back to their life stories um, in greater depth later on. DDP, how was the reaction amongst the wrestling community when you first started doing this? Was there a oh, lot of reserve? No, nah, the, the, the boys were the only one to know. The guys in the back, when I first started doing it, uh, they laughed at me. You know, like I would have laughed at someone who was doing yoga before that. Uh, and again, when they found that I was creating my own type of yoga, for people who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga. you got to remember, I've never created this for the yogis. I don't even call myself a yoga instructor. I'm a fitness Are you girl. trained as a yoga instructor? I've got over 500 hours, probably 1,000 hours <laughs> okay. uh, in as being trained you know, by some of the best people in the world for this. But what I do with my own stuff, I don't even you – know, I call it DDP yoga. You'll never hear me call it yoga, yoga, because any yogi that – is then there's there's a couple different types of yogis. There's the yoga snob with yoga tude. They wouldn't even think this is yoga. They're right. Probably <laughs> true. <laughs> but the really great yogis, like Brian Kest, who's the guy who really put power yoga on the map, um, Shiva Ray, you know, she's probably one of the most leading yogis on the world. They love the fact of what I'm doing because I'm getting people to doing any kind of yoga is beneficial. They get like Brian Kess is so cool. You go to Brian Kess's studio in LA, he's got all the other studios up on his wall. He's like, go wherever you want to go. Just get in some kind of yoga. Like when he saw what I was doing, he was like, because uh, I would go to his classes. And uh, he was like, you know, when I did this thing with power yoga, everybody said I was bastardizing. Like he was, like he was destroying yoga. Now, all of a sudden, that's completely accepted, uh, but it took years. What I'm doing coming in, some people call me the bad boy of yoga. Yeah, you know, to me, I'm the, I'm the guy for fitness. All I know is there's a disabled veteran. The video, is you've seen that video, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it was phenomenal. Over 10,600,000 hits. I inspired one guy. He's inspired millions. Yeah. And off of that, Jake and Scott... Neither one of them would have ever done the workout if they didn't actually get to see Arthur's transformation when it came to the whole thing as far as uh, the journey that he went on a video. And again, I've seen every yogi put that up on their screen. I mean, there's every single yogi on the planet who's got a website stuck that up there. But he didn't do it doing yoga. He did it doing DDP yoga. Do you try and incorporate at least some of the more meditative aspects of yoga? I mean, because obviously if you have a more traditional approach to yoga, the, uh, the end goal is actually mindfulness, which you achieve through breathing and the postures. But, you know, the physical aspect of it is very much secondary. And you've kind of just, you know, wiped all of that away and just really focused on the, the physical capacity for these yoga poses to help people. Um, do you have any element of like the breathing and the mindfulness in there, or do you just want to focus entirely on the physical side of things and well, just make I, it really, I, I really think, straightforward and pragmatic? I think my breathing part is more in depth than any yogi uses. Period. Because I just don't get you breathing. I get you breathing and counting, which means when you're breathing in and you're counting out three, two, one. That was all breath. Controlling your breath in a spot that you can be in a position and be in an uncomfortable position, we'll just call it that because I don't use, baby, you got to be cool, quieter. I'm on the thing. <laughs> My daughter, she's really noisy. Um, the, uh, uh, when it comes to the breathing, when you can get in an uncomfortable situ uh, position and breathe in for five and out for five, you are getting in really amazing shape. When you can do it in for ten, and out for 10, and I have you focusing on your breath to a degree that you're really connecting with your diaphragm with your breath. So I really get into that. 
but the part of the whole spirituals part <laughs> and the chanting and that, not so much. And I would say not at all. Because I wanted to eliminate all that because that's what turns the regular guy and regular gal off. So I wanted to make it friendly to them so that the part that I really do, and if you do my DVDs, the biggest thing that I get from people, especially women and, and people who are really big, is that I don't make them feel like they can't do this. There's always a positive flow going through this that, yes, you can do this. Here's what I, I encourage you to do. Step in. Lower to a knee. I'm constantly talking during these workouts, so they go by fast. And my first workouts are 20 minutes. They're not 60 or 90 minutes. Now, you can work up to, I think my longest workout 70 minutes, but most of them are like 30, 40 minutes. I have a 50-minute workout. But I like to have people starting off slow so they feel they can do this. This is why I've had so much unbelievable success with big people, you know, and, and I have guys, I have two kids, one is 20, 29 and 601 pounds, mm -hmm. and he has lost, in the last 18 months, he has lost 242 pounds, Wow. more importantly, That's at phenomenal. 385 pounds, he can hold his foot, like I can't do it here, you can't really see it, but he can hold his foot in the air and balance himself on one leg, and the other guy is B, uh, DJ, He's lost, he went from 519, he's lost 234 pounds in two years. And to watch these two mountain men just start to get in better and better shape, but again, hold their foot over their head, balance in black crow, that's what I call it, knees up on your elbows, core strength positioning that they can really go, wow, look what I can do now. And that's what DDP yoga is all about. It's about the positive, the, the positive initiative that I can. You can do this. And I constantly encourage them, not just in my DVDs, but on my website, my team DDP yoga, which is a really amazing support system, not just of me, but of the members that I've helped that help others. And that's why we've been so successful. Well, that's, I mean, that's certainly very inspiring. I'm, I mean, actually, a lot of that sounds like it is actually within uh, more traditional approaches to yoga. Um, and certainly, I'm sure that you can find immense depth through other approaches. Uh, but I, I think it's what sounds wonderful about this is that it's, it is, as you say, reaching out to people who otherwise would be turned off by the idea of yoga and getting them to uh, engage with something that physically can help them in a positive way. Uh, Drew, just quickly before we take a break, would, yeah. would you try DDP yoga? Have you done yoga before? I have actually have done yoga before. I'm one of those yeah, regular well, guys that I've tried. Start. And I would. I actually I know a personal story, a personal family friend of mine, major back surgery, try DDP yoga. He's getting better as we speak. Wow. Well, he endorse, he's a doctor too. Him. He endorses it. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, we'll be right back in a moment after a brief excerpt from this week's episode of Serious Business featuring Krill, presented by Exploding Sound. We're back with our discussion on wrestling and yoga and DDP yoga and what they can all offer each other. DDP, what is the physical toll that wrestling takes on your body <laughs> and how much behind the scenes are we just not aware of? So much. Uh, the travel is brutal. Um, I was on the, the road. travel? More the travel. than the actual events? Well, it's, it's, it's a combination. You have to realize that people see us on Monday night or a Thursday night or a Sunday pay-per-view, they think that's all we're doing. We wrestle, when you are really over and you are in the limelight, you're wrestling upwards of 270 days a year. Wow. That's in the mat, bouncing around. And the mat is not soft. It's wood and, and wrestling mat that kids worked on in high school with wood on top of that, canvas on top of that, it has a little bit of a give, but not that much. And uh, 
long story short, you're going to get in your car, you're going to pack your bag, you're going to drive 100 or 200 or 300 miles to the next gig, check in a hotel, go to sleep, get up in the morning, pack your bag, load your car, go eat, go to the gym, go to the building, hop in your car, drive 100, 200, 300 miles, or hop on a plane at 6 o'clock, which means you had to be up at 3.30 to catch that. You might have got in at 12.30, slept three hours, popped up, went to the air. I mean, the wear and tear on your body. Brutal. Drew, sure. do you think fans realize that this is the case behind the scenes? I think it depends on the fan, but I think most fans really do understand it. I mean, I, I go to independent shows all the time. I see these workers, and they, they might walk very confidently to the ring, yeah. but outside the ring, you, you know, they're hunched over. The same guy, you, they look like two different people. And I've seen some bad stuff happen in the ring before. I've seen some bad injuries. And I know what the rest, you know, don't say the word fake around wrestlers. <laughs> DDP, so, so recently there was the tragic death of Ultimate Warrior, which seemed to be a, another instance of something that seems to be like a recurring, unfortunately like a recurring pattern of no, that, perhaps because that. of the toll, of the physical toll, of the emotional toll, I don't know. Um, do you think, that, how do wrestlers deal with this pressure, what seems to be like this pressure to have to be this superhero to all their fans, do you think they're taking enough care of themselves behind that? Well, you have to understand, what happened with Warrior is nothing like the other guys. A lot of the other guys who had those deaths, for starters, were they were still wrestling, and the wear and tear of their body. Ultimate Warrior, that was not the case at all. He'd been out of wrestling for over 18 years. Uh, was in, from what I saw, amazing shape, because he, I've watched some of his videos from time to time. But obviously, you know, what you look like on the outside isn't always what you look like on the inside. And obviously there was a problem there, you know, with his heart because he came back that he had a heart attack. So, you know, his father, he's, he died at 54, I believe, or 55. His father died at 59. His grandfather died at 53. Oh, wow, that is quite... So, I mean, that's... So when you look at it, you can't put Warrior into that group, but okay. there was always a lot of guys that were dying for a long time there, and it was bad. And, you know, it's... The WWE, and I say this every time I talk about this, they have the, the most stringent drug screening policy in sports. And we're not a sport. We're sports entertainment. But we still have a better drug policy meaning screening for whether it be roids yes. or whether it be painkillers, whatever, a better drug policy than the MLB, the NBA, or the NFL. You know, um, in the NFL, Scott Hall just walked Dr. in here. Dr. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. There's, there's Scott Hall saying hello here. Hey. Hi. Dr. Welcome to Brainy Radio. Hired by Vince to run the drug testing program because he used to teach Olympic athletes how to beat the test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when his steroid charm went down for Vince was when I first got my break, and I was going to be the poster boy for guys who made money off roids because I was 290 as a diamond stud, but Razor weighed about 260. So I made <laughs> so, well, uh, there's one from the bad guy himself. I told you, <laughs> we got to work out right yeah. after we're going to talk it. <laughs> DDP, do you think that there's an element of pushing yourself too hard and having to know how to take a step back um, oh, for the long run? Because I, I mean, I noticed in your in your interview with Nancy Grace recently, uh, you mentioned that at, at least right now you have you really want to focus on the, the long term healthy approach to life. Well, I think, think that that's much... lacking in the sort of wrestling culture. Not now. Like again, Not now. Well, today, cool. again, these kids today, like we used to, like our deal was when we got done wrestling, you know, because we were doing Monday Nitro, well, they played it again. They like replayed it on uh, TBS. So we go right to the bar. I mean, that, that was like who could drink the most. That was like a macho thing. And everybody partied. Today, yeah. those kids play, the guys you see on on uh, on uh, Raw or uh, SmackDown, they go home and play, they go to the hotel and play video games. Yeah. We, we didn't do that. Do you They're, think that's, a, that's perhaps a, a positive thing, though, in some ways, to be a bit gentler on no, yourself? I think, I, think it's, I think it's way better. <laughs> you know, I, you know, yeah, I, I happen I to agree. Really, 
I mean, I, yeah, Drew, from a from a fan's perspective, perspective, presumably it must be really painful uh, when you see your stars, you know, either falling out of wrestling because of injury or even dying. You know, I mean, it, it must be ex- extremely it, difficult. I think it's always been part of wrestling, but I happen to agree with DDP. I mean, when I was a kid, it was the bigger the better. You saw these guys, you wanted right. muscles on top of muscles on top of muscles. And now, I mean, the WWE champion is a vegan. <laughs> he's 200 pounds if he's that. He, you know, and he said it himself, I would never think he, I would be a champion. And now he is because he's a great wrestler, he's a great worker, great, great gimmick, great, everything. Great human being. I, definitely. He's really, he's really an amazing kid and an amazing worker in the ring. So, again, there's, it's just a different world right now. You know, Nancy was way off the mark. She right. was... She took liberties that she should never have taken. Uh, I would never do her show again, no matter what. She was actually, so Diamond. I, I wanted. <laughs> Diamond. I actually wanted to mention that because I know she got a lot of flack from the uh, the internet community, the wrestling fans, and then WWE. And now there's, I guess, there's a boycott, and uh, that was upsetting to you, I guess. That was. Yeah. She sandbagged you. I tell you, I can't even talk about that woman because I'll say things I don't want to say, you know, okay. and. Well then, let's. Uh, we're gonna have to wrap up soon anyway. Okay. Um, DDP, maybe if we can just finish with uh, the most inspiring uh, stories that you've seen through your yoga. I know you mentioned Arthur Borman, uh, the gentleman who was told he could he could never walk and uh, never run again. Um, walk, never walk again. Never walking. Oh, walk, yeah, with his. Pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, so. And you're helping so many wrestlers now. Over 50, 50 wrestlers actually use DDP yoga, right? So yep. who who have you been proudest of? I really think the uh, what what Jake, you know, Jake took control of his life, and Scotty. They both take control of their lives. You know, it's very inspiring to a lot of different people there. You know, uh, um, it's they're not not really either one of them trying to set an example to anybody or say this is the way you should do something. They're just living their lives. And uh, and it's been a you know we started a movie called the Resurrection of Jake the Snake. We started filming it 18 months ago when Jake started this journey, so people could see you know it's a journey. There's no like okay we're just gonna keep going up up up. There's a lot of falls, you know, and you pick yourself back up and you keep on going. And that's that that's the the lesson of life to me. Life isn't about how many times you go down. It's about how many times you get yourself back up and you keep moving forward. And if you fall down, don't beat yourself up. Just get up, brush yourself off, and keep moving forward. Because if you keep moving forward, eventually you're going to get to the other side of that hill. I don't care how big the hill is. Eventually, if you keep moving forward, you're going to get to the other side. Well, let's, let's end on that, that very heartfelt and heartening note. Uh, that is all the time we have for now. Thank you so much, DDP and Thank DJ you, Drew, for joining me. To continue the conversation, share your thoughts with us on Twitter at Breakthrough News. We'll be right back in a moment after this quick excerpt from a special episode of Live Studio featuring Thus Owls. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm Charlotte Tenherenstein and this is Breakthrough News, an independent news show for the free thinking web. We bring you a range of voices on the issues that today's generation is thinking about. Be sure to check out BreakthroughRadio.com through the weekend for our continued Street Week coverage, including our feature on the ongoing fight to eradicate street harassment. That's it for what's breaking through the news today. Tell us what's breaking through your world on Twitter at Breakthrough News. I'm Charlotte Tenherenstein and thank you for joining us. (music) 